Good morning. Happy Thursday. You are with me, Tony Tesler, and boop. There, I found my video. Let me turn the volume down. Hit play. Ah, oh, looks good. Awesome. All right, let me get this situated. Uh, when you get here, if you're watching live, um, say hello. Let me know you're here. If you're watching on replay, uh, give me a little hashtag replay so I know you're watching. Uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, hey, Sue, guess what I'm using today? Those flowers you sent me. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube later, do me a favor and subscribe if you have not already. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I need, I didn't check this week, but I think I still need mm, maybe around 10 more subscribers. So that would be awesome. Then I can get my name. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Linda. Thanks for everybody being here. Okay. Uh, today is the first Thursday in May. So I'm doing my virtual workshop and, hmm, got to push my little thing up a little bit my little mat. Everything seems to be in place. And then when I go live, it looks a little different. Hey, Sean's here too. Awesome. Okay, girls. So a couple things may workshop today. Um, and we're thinking along the lines of, um, April showers, bring may flowers. So everything I'm going to do today, uh, is going to be using some flower set or another, some new stuff. Um, some stuff that is not, you know, that's still in the catalog. Uh, and let me see. So $50 or more order with the code for the hostess thing, um, hostess kit. And this month you're going to get f loose flower flourishes, which I did not order. My order is coming tomorrow. I did not get my order in time on Tuesday. So you're going to get a pack of these. It says 60 pieces, loose dimensional flowers. They look to be like they're, um, plastic. And my intention was to glue dot them on to some of the projects. Um, but you know, we'll just have to do that later. You can also make shaker cards with these. Uh, I'm very excited to get these. They're in the new colors. So there's the fresh freesia, which is like the purple. And then the, let me bring this a little closer, polished pink here, which I'm liking that. And then the pale papaya. So I am excited to get those. Um, and while I'm looking here, bumblebee trinkets, wah, wah. They are on back order until May 31st, I believe, the week of May 31st. So I wish I had gotten some on that first order I did, and now I'm kicking myself. Um, so I'm going to have to wait and get them because they are so cute. All right. So that is May workshop information. Um, let me have a sip of coffee. And oh, next we're going to do mail that I forgot to do last week. So. Let's see. So look at this cute koala card. Um, so last month, uh, Stamp Club Girls and I, we did uh, this lattice fold card and Marianne sent this one to me. I love these little dots that she put on here. She like hand did all these dots. Um, but she made this one and uh, you know, then we put a little piece of paper on the inside. Um, but this is a, I forget the name of it, but he's been retired for a couple years, I think. But so adorable. This was a single stamp thinking of you. I love it. Thank you, Marianne. And then these papers. Do you remember these flower papers? Some of you may. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, then, oh wait, here. I just got this one yesterday. This is from our current, um, the paper pumpkin kit that we just got, which is all like the fruit cards and everything, watermelons and all that. And um, Linda sent this and she said, look, I actually made the cards from her kit. So I like that. Then I've got a swap from my friend Rose. And so you know how sometimes when you put lumpy things in, you will put a piece of paper in just to protect it. Well, she embossed the paper with this flower. Um, I don't have this embossing folder. So I really appreciate this because now I can make something with it. So I'm going to put that in a safe place. Um, but look at this. This is a new pansy set. Oh my God. And she had a little note on here. She did this for a swap and she cut 19 die cut pieces for every card. 
Now, I don't know how many she had to make, but that's even one is too many. This is a lot of die cutting. And I believe, um, I think Gail put it together a chart because she has this pansy set about the different pieces that you cut and put together to build your flowers. And this looks like it was cut directly from the designer series paper. Yeah, hey Peggy. Um, but this, you know, background. See how cute this bee is? Let me get, see how close can I get? And I hope it still stays in focus. This thing, uh, it's adorable. It is such a good size for a little, little something. Actually, let's look at the ladybug for comparison. Our ladybug trinkets. Ah, okay. So, a little bit bigger than, a little bit bigger than the ladybug, and this is definitely gold, whereas this is like a old-timey finish to it. Let me see. Hopefully, you guys can see that good. Um, but I like that. I like the size. And I'm going to leave these ladybugs out because I need them for later. Um, but beautiful card. Beautiful papers. This is the Fresh Freesia. Love it, love it. Hi, Bertha. Welcome. And then look at the inside. Gail, I mean, Gail. Rose always dolls up the inside of her cards. So then you still have room to write a message. More of the die cutting. Die cutting. And then that pretty paper. Mmm. I love it, Rose. Then I got this beautiful card from Leslie. And I love, I forget which stamp set this is from, but I know these vines and the words are together. And this is gray granite. And this is some marble paper. I believe that's from a celebration pack maybe a couple of years ago. I'm not sure. I want to say something with like petal pink involved. I can't remember, but I love it. Thank you, Leslie. Then, dun, 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 this is what I was waiting for. I got it last week, or whenever I told you, Sue, that I got it. And um, so we're going to use this for our last bonus thing. But Sue made this in one of her videos a couple weeks ago. And I know she sent this to me because I do, in fact, make her smile. <laughs> but I like these um, hydrangea papers and these pastel pearls, which we can get again. I know they were on back order for a long time, but they came back mm, a couple weeks ago. And they are in the new catalog, so there's no huge rush. Um, but look what she gave me. So I don't have these f daisy punch dies, these flower dies, and I needed some for um, our bonus project. So I asked Sue to send me some, and I'm going to pull out these. I think these are terracotta tile. But that is close enough to orange. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with those. She sent me a bunch of different sets. And you'll see what these will be for later. So, thanks again, Sue. And I want you and Gail. This is why I sent you the extra pens. So you can do this too. Okay, so that's mail. Let's get into our first project. And then I'll... Um, spread some more announcements in. So let me just check my list. Mayflowers, blah, blah, blah. Yep, today's May 6th. Okay, first project we are going to make. Let's get out our soft sea foam pieces. We're going to make a square gatefold card. And it is styled after this one that I just made um, last week for. Craft Roulette, it's this online, every Friday night she goes live and it's kind of like a game show, but it's more of a improv crafting class or video. So she spins a wheel four times and you get four parameters, which, you know, requirements for your card. Um, and this week, or last week actually, it was, the project was a gatefold. So you had to do something with a gatefold. Um, and I posted this on my blog already too. The colors were pinks and blacks. So I've got the uh, magenta madness and the black. Um, the element, which is like just some item, something that has to be on your project, was cats or dogs. So I used the cat punch. And I actually doubled this up. Like I punched it twice 
and emboss just the first layer, the top layer, and then I glued them back together just to make it a little sturdier. Um, and then the surprise element, or the random, they call it random, was vellum. So I added this vellum doily that I still have. So this is loosely, this is based our first project. This is what we're gonna do. And the belly band, you just slide it off and then you have your stuff to write in. So it is five by five. Um, if you want to make a square envelope, it's gonna cost you extra to mail it. But what I, um, I have five by seven envelopes that I got from Amazon. So in your make and take kit, you're gonna get a five by seven white envelope. Um, so you would just put that in and I'll have to weigh it. I don't think it's too heavy, um, but I would definitely, I'll let you know about that. But so same design, but we're gonna use different, we're gonna use hand pen petals, cause like I said, today was about May flowers. And we're gonna use, um, I'm gonna cut some of that out. So this is a new set, hand pen petals. This was on our pre-order list. So like you've probably seen every demonstrator and their brother using it. Um, cause you know, we can only get a different, a handful of things. Um, but I have not put ink on mine yet. So we're going to get to it. Um, now I wanted spring colors and I haven't used soft sea foam, I feel in a while. So that's what our base is going to be. And let me reach over here. Um, I am going to give you the directions first. So base is five by 10. Let me drag all this out from under here five by 10 and then score the long side at two and a half and seven and a half. So this is the long side. So I'm going to score it two and a half and seven and a half. And I'm going to do that after I'm go through all these gate panels. These are your side pieces that are going to cover your flaps. These are two and three eighths by four and seven eighths. So when we do all the folding, scoring and all, each panel, each flap is really two and a half inches wide by five inches tall. So I took an eighth of an inch off. Hey Marty, thank you. I took an eighth of an inch off um, of each and then I embossed it with the Parisian Flourish embossing folder. And I gotta tell you, after I cleared out all my retired embossing folders, I don't have a whole lot left. So I've gotta get a few new ones. I've got two that are coming. But um, yeah, some I'll still keep. Anyway, panels, two and three eighths by four and seven eighths. Layered squares. Let me bring our sample back in. These are two squares. So one square and then the second square that I embossed. So we've got three and a half inch square. That's the bigger one. And then three and a quarter inch square. So my three and a quarter inch square, I went ahead and embossed with the brick and mortar folder and that's gonna layer like that, okay? I wanted a lot of texture um, because I'm really only gonna be doing some stamping, you know, on the for the front, something to cut out. All right, inside, four and three quarters by four and three quarters because our, you know, after we score everything, it's gonna be five by five. Hi, Sharon, how are you? And then our belly band, one and one eighth by 11 and we are gonna um, chop that down <coughs> which incidentally this is what's left over like I got all these pieces for the card cut out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11 so good to know um, so I'll leave that there you can like take a picture and then good all right and I can bring that back if we need um, so I cut everything but I did not score it. So let's score. Our base piece is five by 10. And again, I'm scoring at two and a half and seven and a half. And how perfect that Sharon is here since she's the one that told me about this um, folding. All right. So I had asked a couple weeks ago, you know, how do you score and then not get the shiny marks from your embossing folder? And Sharon says, put a scratch piece of paper over it. And um, she is absolutely right. So I am burnishing that pretty hard. 
and I can see the shiny marks on my paper, but none on here. So awesome. All right, so let's start with liquid glue. As always, um, when I'm gluing down embossed things, I do like the liquid glue better because I feel like it gets in the nooks and crannies. And these, I'm just trying, it's just a very small border, like I said, an eighth of an inch. Sometimes you'll notice um, when you emboss things, they go wonky size, like sometimes they stretch out a little bit more. Sharon, you and me both, I mean, I'm here in Maryland and it's 11, but I'm working like nights lately, so even me getting up at 9.30 is uh kind of a struggle for me sometimes. All right, more glue. And actually I wanna turn this this way so I can see it better. All right, but yeah, sometimes when you emboss things, it stretches the paper out funny and you may wanna go back and trim it again. Um, Cause like I said, this started out two and three eighths by four and seven eighths. Uh, but I can tell it's a little bit, it stretched it out this way because this border is thinner than up here. But for this, I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so here is our base. And I'm going to go ahead and tape in my inside. Ooh, and I got glue. Always good. Not. All right. Now with this size, um, I came up with it because, like I said, the requirement was for a gatefold and I didn't want to do just a normal gatefold. I thought, mm, poo poo, that's boring. I've done some of those recently. Let's do something fun. So then I thought, well, how small could I get it or how big could I get it? And I went with how big I could get it out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11 without making like wonky. I guess I could have gone something by 11 five and a half by 11, but then I definitely would have to make an envelope. So maybe that's why cannot remember. All right, now belly band. So you're going to get a strip and I'm going to have to bend part of it just so I can fit it in um, the envelope, the package. All right. So I hold it about here. So maybe one inch over the middle. And I'm just gonna hold it in place because I want this to overlap. So let's, I'm just gonna squeeze it like that. And then I do check and make sure that I folded it straight. And this, I don't want like a crisp fold necessarily because I want it to have some give because we wanna be able to slide this. So we want it snug, but not, um, not so tight that we can't move it. And that's what I'm trying to see here. I gotta make sure I can still move it. All right, so then we'll just fold it over here. Perfect, okay. Now just a little bit of glue right here. So when you do a belly band, I do like to have the closure like in the front, as long as I've got something that's gonna go over top of it to cover the seam up. You try to put your cardstock through the folder first and then cut. I always feel like um, I might not get a straight cut and it depends on your cutter too. You know, the guillotine cutter, yeah, you can still get a good cut on an embossed piece, but if you've got the kind that, um, you know, that you drag through, that can be pretty, um, pretty rough. And actually I, I need this to be a little bit tighter. That's too loose. And no one's going to see this, so I'm not too concerned that it ripped it a little bit. But more glue. And this time, um, I'm going to squeeze it just a little bit harder. This is just trial and error. Depends on your embossing folder, like how thick your this is. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. All right. 
that's better. Still maybe a little bit looser than I like, but I'm gonna have to go with it. It's dead to me now. All right, now let's bring our other layering pieces in. And I swear we're gonna get to some stamping soon. This is just more um, assembly. So I've, I've embossed the three and a quarter piece with the brick and mortar folder. Yeah, Gail, you like that little one too, that little guillotine. All right, now this, so the vellum doily, especially on the soft sea foam, I mean, it shows up. It's just to give a little bit more interest. You're not expected to be able to see it entirely. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little glue right there in the middle because actually that's where my flower is gonna go. I'll put it right in the middle. The fact that it's coming up, who cares? It's gonna get covered up. See how it's coming up through the vellum holes? Does not matter, because we're covering that up. Just like this glue peeking out, doesn't matter. We're covering all of that up. All right, now let's do some stamping. And let's put these out of the way. Um, so here's another thing that you get to see. I know I mentioned it maybe a month or so ago, but I probably sounded like a crazy person trying to explain it. They're packaging the photopolymer stamps differently now. So before we used to have, it was a clear sheet and then a printed sheet and you could line them up. Well, now they're putting it right in the back case for us. So, oh good, Peggy. Um, so I don't know if they expect us to stick the stamps directly on here because I have done that before too. Uh, the thing I found with photopolymers is once they get a little grungy, they don't want to stick and then you have to wash them um, in the sink with some dish soap. But if you're lazy like me and keep putting that off and off, your stamps will just flop around. Um, they'll fall off of here too, but all right. So which one do I want to use? Because let's see, I can do that one. I'm just holding this up to see what's going to cover yeah that would be pretty good or this other one mm -mm -mm. actually i think i'm going to use this one okay do you marty yeah i was putting them on the case for a bit um because a couple years ago that was like you know somebody said hey this is a good idea and i was all on board with it and then some i threw the plastic away because I was like, well, I don't need that anymore. Um, and then I felt like I should have kept them. All right, so we're going to do this bunch of flowers. And our greeting, I want to say, um, feel better friend. Anything is possible. Yeah, congratulations. Mm. So this, any, this card could be anything, really. Let's go with the feel better friend. Oh, I'm dithering about. No, let's do thanks. Because I do want to um, punch this out. Ah, ah, man, brand new virgin stamps. All right. So let me get, I'm going to use my Versafine Onyx. Is this block going to fit? Yep. And this has to dry for a little bit. Stampin' Up! does not sell this, um, but I I like it. I like it better. Yeah, Linda, that's what, um, that's what I'm saying. They get a little loose and then because they're just a little dirty. So I don't know how I feel about it. I guess we're going to see how it goes. Um, but anyway, this Versafine, Stampin' Up! does not sell it, but I like it better than any of the blacks we have, really. Um, and it cleans off your stamps nice. All right, so let's put that there. And I wanna let this dry for a minute before I bring in some color. Now I chose these colors, soft sea foam, because um, I didn't wanna start using new in colors for something like this, because I didn't know, you know, not everybody may have them yet. So I wanted something that people are more likely to have. Um, now you could color this with markers or there are fill-in stamps um i just have to figure out which one is which that one that's there that looks
looks like a close fit. And I do like that we can hold these up now and see through the plastic sheeting. I think this is the right one. And then we'll have, I'm going to find the leaves. That one fits. Hmm. I may have to color these leaves. So we'll just use what we have. All right, did I peel a leaf off? Or I just have the one? All right, actually, let's just use the one for now. We'll see how it goes. All right, thanks. I want to stamp thanks in black. And I'm going to do a white on white. So I want to use the double oval punch on this and have it a white oval and then the white scallop. And hopefully that will fit. That would have been smart to check that first, but wah, wah. All right, let's mount our flowers. Hey, Peg. Let's put this to the side other flower and a leaf and then let's see nope still a little bit wet and I hope I didn't completely wreck that but I'm gonna go with it all right shoo you know what we can do while we're waiting for that to dry is mount our square so I want to put foam dots, dimensionals, right along here. So I'm going to hold this up and make a little marker for the ends so I know how far I can go and still be covered up. I still have this covered up. So now let's just fill in with a bunch of dimensionals. Now if you had some of the, um, like a roll of it, I know I've got that that I use sometimes. Um, I think I used that last week, actually. It makes for quick work. All right, let's tap all these. Yikes. I didn't realize it's 1125. Of course, this is on the wet glue. Just need to hold that there for a minute. All right. Now, while I'm picking these off, um, so I was going to announce after my first project, there's two specials going on now. Um, one is for hostesses, workshops, um, even you know regular orders. If you put in anything over two hundred fifty dollars, you get an extra twenty five dollars to spend in your hostess freebies, your stamp and rewards. So that's awesome. Uh, that goes till the end of June, I believe. Um, yeah, May 4th through June 30th. Um, the other thing, oops, now I gotta concentrate and drag this a little closer. So I wanna get this centered. There we go. So then I want this to slide. Perfect. Um, the other special is the starter kit. So if you want to be like, you know, we say discount shopper or hobbyist, um, it's a good time because it's $155 of stuff for only $99. Plus you get an, uh, an old paper pumpkin kit. So that's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, so, all right, that's that. Let's check this again. Seems good enough. All right, so we want soft sea foam, and I wanted um, something in the, I was thinking either pink or yellow, and I think I'm going to go with petal pink. I wanted something light, so petal pink, I'm just going to stamp right over these. Now my petal pink looks a little dark. Um, because I did re-ink all my pads a couple month ago or so. 
Okay. So it looks like these are not a, it's just a sketchy. It's not an exact perfect fit in here, uh, but I like it. All right, so petal pink that is looking very dark. And then we'll go with the soft sea foam. And some of these are not going to, yeah, that fits good enough. Oopsie. It's just kind of artsy. I like it. Now it looks like I still need something for that middle. Wah, wah. So do I drag out my marker? I think so. And give that a quick swipe. This is what I meant by you could do this with markers, um, whatever you had, or you could stamp it. All right, now we're gonna need to cut this. So I've switched, I've decided I'm switching my dies over to this um, stamp and storage system. And so I'm in the middle of transferring everything over. Um, I had them on a, a different kind of magnet sheet before for a while and that's just got, I didn't like it anymore. So trying something new. Okay, here's our, the die we want. And I'm going to need to get my little die cutting machine out. So this is the mini stamp and cut. We've got our plate one and then the cut plate. And I actually like to still hold this in place with a little like a post-it something that's not terribly sticky. Um, I think the magnetic thing is coming, but frankly, I don't trust it. There were some problems with it, like bending wonky, like when they first came out with it. And I got to trim this a little bit. Um, I just don't trust it. That's, that's all I'll say about that. I'm not getting it. Using a little tape or a post-it like this is just fine with me. The new storage, this thing is, it's from Stampin' Storage. Um, it's a different company. I think the, the lady that started it is a demo. So yeah, they don't go in a binder necessarily, Sean. They're just sleeves and then they sit up um, in a box, which I have plenty of boxes. Um, but yeah, you put it, so the magnet sheets and then these plastic folders are separate and they have different sizes. I think I got these are the six by sevens, but I think they just sit up like this. And this is what I've got to redo my labels because I printed out, I've got a too big of a font. So I want to, I got to figure out how to make my font smaller on my label maker. I've been using the same font and the same size for probably 15 years. So <laughs> I could have figured that out, but then you just stack them up like in a, you know, either a shelf or a, a little binder, not a binder, like, you know, a little box or something and flip through it, which is what I was doing with my other system. Um, but for whatever reason, I just, I didn't like them anymore. They were bigger and I think this is more, this is neater, more contained. And I think they're having a sale. I just got an email because of course now I'm getting all their emails. All right. So let's get back to this. Mmm, pretty. So this, I like it cute enough. This adding the flower, even better. 100 times better. And I'm just gonna pop this up with some more dimensionals. Lots of dimensionals, why not? So we've got the dimension from the embossing folders. Oh, you've been looking for something that goes in a binder. These magnetic sheets are, they're pretty strong and they come, they're like cardboard on the back. Let 
Peggy, you're gonna um are you gonna attach a picture? I marked the stamp set that I own. Nice. Peggy, you would definitely have to share a picture. That sounds good. Alright, now I'm gonna put this at a little at a jaunty angle. And then yeah, die storage is always um an issue. Oh look at that. I realized I just um smeared my thanks. And that's not going to um, fit in my punch anyway. All right. Hmm. I want to redo that because I don't like it. And somehow I got glue on me. All right. I'm going to heat set this for a minute. So hold, please. this is good um bertha would like to know the name of the magnetic sheet and sleeve it is from a company called stamp and storage and it is spelled out um just like it stamp and storage and actually when i update my blog in the next day or two i will um i will mention who this is but just google for this stamp and storage okay Ooh, look at that. How'd I get black ink on me? I mean, I know how, but geez. All right, so that's that. And I'm just going to cut this straight because I want to not, I want to touch this as little as possible. And, hmm. Let's go for a little ripping. So I feel like ripping adds a little bit more texture too. All right. Mm, I like it. I like it. I'm like, where did I get glue from? It was on the back of my paper. Jeez. Okay. Back to this. So I want to just tuck him in here, the little thanks, and I'm just going to add a little glue. And then we're going to finish with some um, elegant faceted gems because I know I have them and they come in petal pink. Petal pink and clear and frosted. Elegant faceted gems. Mm, perfect. You could use pearls. You could use rhinestones. Anything really. Um, but I figure these little touches of oops, phone fell. By the way, if my um, if the garage calls, I gotta answer the phone. Hopefully, my car will be ready. Uh, I put it in the shop the last night, no, the night before, for an oil change, and now I'm just waiting for it to be for them to call me, saying that it's ready. All right, so we'll do two down here. Ooh, I like that, and then one more. One more. How about right there? Ooh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Ooh, okay. Squee. All right, so this, we've got our belly band, it slides. I'm still thinking that slide's a little too loosey-goosey, but I'm gonna have to live with it. Um, I love it. So that's our first card, and I cannot believe that took me 40 minutes, so I apologize. I'm gonna have to go a little quicker. Um, so soft sea foam and petal pink. All right, now actually this next card is gonna go quicker. All right, let me put this over here. Our next card I want to use, this is a new set. So I'm gonna use um, Quiet Meadow. This is a new one and it comes with dies and then I'm pairing it with um, Stack Stone, which is not new, I've had it for a long time and I don't know that I've ever used it. 
So this time I want to use some of the new in colors too. Now I don't suspect that everyone has the new in colors. So um, this is just going to be a cardstock. You'll see colors and then we're going to add a little bit of ribbon. All right. So the dies, let's get this out of the way. What I've done is cut half sheets of these flowers. So here's the flower dies. Oops. Now I know I've mentioned this before to, if you're going to cut a lot of stuff like this, um, put some press and seal on it and then it makes it easier. So what I did is I have a half a sheet of cardstock. I laid it, laid the cardstock down. Then I laid my dies down and then I put this press and seal on. So then when you go to peel it up, let me peel it this way. Your dies stay on the press and seal so you can cut another set easily. Um, and I just, now I have to dig this out before they popped right out. Here we go. But so for your make and take kit, you're going to get, um, like two of each color of wildflowers. All right. I'm going to put this where I won't lose it. So I'm going to just punch out like the two on the ends or the two that will come out. I did have to run this through my big shot like three times. And I think that was because, um, I mean, I had so many dies on it. Uh, but you know, the middle of your big shots, usually like not the tightest spot. And I should have used my other, oops. I have a plate that's for detailed stuff. Actually that plate wouldn't work here. I have a Chrome plate. And uh, that's more for like lacy stuff, very detailed. This isn't detailed. All right, so I want two of those. Let's see, two, and this is gray granite and polished pink and black. So I just want, I'm actually only gonna use three of these, but you're gonna get six. So you're gonna get two of each color so you can pick and choose what you want. And then you could actually probably do two cards out of it. All right. And I just cut these this morning. Otherwise I would have had them popped out. Oh wait, here's that. Nope. That's a different one. I want this one. Some of these want to come out better than others. Gonna rip that and looks like this one. Please, let's hope this comes out for me. You know what? I'm over it. Okay, we're gonna use this one, this one, and this one for this card. All right, all these other bits, I'm just going to put off to the side and I do need to swipe all these pieces off. Okay. So your make and take kit, you're going to get basic black, five and a half by eight and a half. Let's fold that and score it. Okay. Then you're going to get gray granite. This is four by five and a quarter. That's our layer. Then you have two pieces of white. One is smaller than the other. So the larger one is four by five and a quarter. That's for the inside of your card. The smaller one is trimmed down like an eighth of an inch. So five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. Okay. So let me go ahead and man, black stuff everywhere. Tape this on the inside just so I don't forget. Now the only ink you're going to need for this, um, you can get away with actually just one ink pad. And that's what I'm going to show you. We're going to use the Memento ink. So we're going to start out with our stacked stone. Now you may not have this background. It's okay. 
You just want any, any background really. So I, when I have my background stamps, I just lay them right on the table like this. I don't use a block. Um, you know, if I'm trying to emboss something, I will use a stamp positioner because just with embossing, I want to get that Versamark on there a couple times. All right, now where's my, that scrap paper I had? Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna have to use this. So I want this to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna wipe it and take, that takes like one layer of the ink off. And then we'll put this layer on and I'm just trying to get it straight-ish and then rub it some more, rub it all over so it's even. And I can tell this got a little bit crooked. Mm, it's good enough. All right, so I just wanted a, a lighter background. And let me just wipe that off. And actually I'll go back and clean that later, but that's the stacked stone which I like it. Um, now I just want to add some collage, like the words. I'm going to put those in black and I want to add this flower and I want to do thinking of you and then some of these little spritzies. All right. So these are all going to go straight black. Spritzies, words, and I'm just grabbing all sorts of random blocks that I have. Uh, and this one does not fit all the way. Here we go. Let's start with the words. And it's not critical that they're right side up, but why not? Let's try to have it right side up. Okay. So this is still even stamped off once this dark and this pattern, it's still kind of, um, you can't really see like the words, but I don't want it. I want it to be like collagey looking. So that's good for that. And then I want to put one flower here. Ooh, I like that. I know it looks messy and I want some, that's it. I like it. Okay. And then, and then I need a little scrap of white for my greeting. So yeah, the only ink you need is black. For this hmm okay I pressed that down too hard all right set that off to the side so now I'm just going to assemble uh, let's do this on our gray granite layer And it does kind of blend in, um, but that's okay. All right, now all we want is, I gotta poke these little middles out. We're gonna attach these three bunches of these flowers. So that's why I'm gonna give you six. I'm gonna give you two of each, and then you pick which ones you want. Um, I suppose I could have used green, but the only ribbons I have right now are the polished pink, and the fresh freesia and I used the fresh freesia last week so I thought we'll use the polished pink this week all right let's get these and actually if these parts don't want to poke out which they don't I'm just gonna put them in the back so it's covered up a little all right so let's do a little glue 
and I'm hanging them off the edge on purpose because then I'm just going to trim it right off. And the fact that they're popping up, um, let's just get a little bit more, a little dot of glue right there. Hold that for a second. Hey, Amy. Yeah, you didn't miss, um, it took me like 40 minutes for the first one. That's crazy. I don't know if I was talking too much or it was just a longer project than I thought. All right, a little bit of glue here. And I just got to hold this for a minute and then have a sip of coffee. Okay. And then, oof, glue on me. And then our final flower. So I like this with the, the gray granite and the black because then you can just use like any one color you want and it's just for a pop of color. And the only ink we needed was one black ink pad. So I figured everybody has that. Okay. Oof. I love it. All right. So then we'll just trim these off. Boop. And then I want to add a, a wet table. Yeah, you're right. And I do have this chamois, but I feel like I don't want to get glue on that. Um, so pop of pink. This is polished pink. And my idea was I was just going to tie a little knot. All right. Cut it at an angle. I really like these ribbons. Um, and that does remind me that I'm putting together a new color, some kits, like two different options to get some of the new in color products. Um, let's go with the glue dot. So glue dot on vellum. I can't remember who said they don't like doing that. Um, I decide I want this to be the front. So when you have it, a knot like this, you can't see through. You can't see the glue dot through the vellum. So I don't think it's really an issue. Ooh, I love that. All right, and then I could pop this up. Actually, yes, I do. So here's the foam tape that I'm talking about. I got this on Amazon. Um, I just use this sometimes when I want to go quick. I wanna pop something up quickly without sitting there picking dimensionals off of everything. And I think I used these last week or the week before. And oh yeah, who was it that told me, because I said, this stuff is really sticky. Julie later on said, oh, you can put glue on it. And she's right. So, so that you can get a little bit of um, wiggle room, you can put glue right on top of this. Do you hear that squeaking? Like it is so sticky. All right, and then we're just gonna, it's gonna give us some playroom. So I can peel it up if I didn't get it quite right. Mm, good. I like that. I like this. This is even better than, um, it turned out better than in my head because I just had sketched this out. All right, and I want to add some regular rhinestones because this needs something. So let's do a few. Let's do like um, a big one down here. And then these little ones, boop, something just to grab your eye with some sparkle. I think these rhinestones are really old. How long ago did we change this packaging? I think I bought like 
probably five or ten packs of them who knows but okay so that's our second card and I absolutely love it now if you wanted more shimmer you could go in with your um oh yeah Sean your greeting thank you thank you thank you yep duh I just want to trim that um, but if you wanted more sparkle, you could go in with the Wink of Stella over top of maybe one or all of these flower bunches. I'm thinking like just the one with the color maybe. Um, but how pretty is this? And the only color is, you know, like right here. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Good call, Sean. Good reminder. Now, will these fit on here? No, I need some little ones. And I do want to pop this up, so. Thanks, Sean. Uh, okay. All right, ooh, five of 12, yikes. All right, so just like that. Mmm, I love it. All right, my dirty stamps pile is getting away from me. So third thing, third project. Um, this one's going to be a tag. Get this out of the way. And I'm using Pretty Perennials and Happy Thoughts, which these are... Um, they're not in the new catalog, so they're still in the uh, January through June catalog. Um, but there's still a chance that they may carry over. So let me start with these and markers and then ribbon. Um, I ran out of the fine art ribbon, so we're going to use um, this is leftover from the holiday catalog. It's the same stuff, only it doesn't have the gold. What is it called? Embroidered ribbon. Um, so we're going to use that up. So tag, six by three tag, crumb cake, because I want the flowers, the color to, to stand out. Um, so six by three, and then this is down a quarter of an inch. So two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then I emboss this with the brick and mortar embossing folder. Um, die cut this white piece. This is from the Tasteful Labels, and we're gonna use that. Um, and then this is a piece of white thick, which I normally wouldn't use thick for this, but it was a scrap. So let's use it. You'll have regular white in your kit for sure. All right. Now, uh, let's stamp this greeting. Oh, whoopsie. That doesn't fit. What fits on here? Just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. That fits. Okay. Let me put these over here. All right. So let's get that versifying again. Because this really is a nice dark black too. Yeah, Peggy, that is fun sometimes, just seeing what you can do with scraps. All right, and then let's hope this is straight. Oh, yeah, okay. Sweet, all right, that is gonna have to sit off to the side to dry. Let's get that out of the way. All right, now, these stamps are um, photopolymer. And I wanted to show you for a reason, I'm using the photopolymers. You know how sometimes when you ink up, like if you don't have the um, ink pad, you can do markers. Well, that doesn't quite work the same with um, photopolymers. I mean, it works, but not that great. I need a bigger block because I want to get these all on at one time. Um, and then I will show you. Okay. So let's show, let's go with the um, magenta madness. 
So you color just like you do, you know, if you if this was a rubber stamp um, with your markers. And actually, I'm just going to do these two. So we give a little huff and stamp down. Um, so that doesn't look too bad, but sometimes it does not look great. And let me get my water. The trick I want to show you is if you ink up your stamp with the Versamark first, that gives this ink something to grab on. All right, now you do have to clean your stamp off in between every um, set of flowers that you want to do. So that's the only downside. So inking up with Versamark, then we're coloring. And for some reason, this is not, um, this is not working out the way I thought. Okay, here it goes. I have to really push down some, that's all. Now I am getting lines um, from the markers, but I was getting that no matter what. It's just trying to use the markers on the photopolymers it's the photopolymer is just not the same as the rubber for some techniques. All right. You know what? It can't be that my marker is dry. Okay. Phew. Now this will also let you emboss something. So if you wanted to add clear embossing powder to it, And then one more. I think the Versamark is coming out on my marker, which is not what I wanted. All right, so you don't really have to huff with this, but uh, press, press, press. All right, that does not look that great. Um, Maybe it was with lighter colors that this look this worked better. It's just that these photopolymers, they don't want to take the marker ink that great. All right, so we cleaned it off. I'm gonna give a little more touch and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make a sum with the bumblebee now. So you wanna clean it off because you don't want that pink to come off in your Versamark. And I'm gonna have to sit here and cut these. I didn't do this part ahead of time because I really, um, I wanted you guys to see. Okay. Let's squeeze these in here. That looks like absolute crap. Let me get that one uh, one more time. So it's really grabbing the marker, which is what I wanted. Um, maybe I just didn't press it good. So I'm just gonna go over this and try to hit it in the same spot mm, from behind. A little bit better here. Okay. Hmm. I like that. Okay. All right. So that's enough flowers. Uh, then we'll do some leaves. I need a couple of leaves. Another P 
piece of white since I used up all of this. Let me cut this out. I'm holding this up so I can see through the light so I can cut just this flower out. Okay, so we still have these. All right, leaves, leaves, leaves. Oh yeah, learning curve for sure. Which it would be ideal if this had worked out better. All right, now this time I'm gonna go, even though I know it's not going to, it beads up so much. Um, but I'm going to just do that anyway. Oh, I just want a couple. Yeah. See how the ink is, it's like pooling up on the, on the stamp. Clean it, Versamark. Stamp it. Mm. Clean it, Versamark. Stamp it. Yeah, I do like that. This really shows you the difference, I guess. So there's more pooling up here on the, let me see how close I can get. This was just the marker to the photopolymer. Um, so it starts just pulling up and then this is with adding the Versamark first. So I kind of like that. All right, but just for quick time saving, we're just gonna do all these leaves are gonna be straight marker to stamp. Two more. That's fine. Let's just do all of them. Because uh, I do have to get ready for work like at 1230. But we've got one more thing. Actually, two more things. All right. So cut these super as quick as I can. Oi. I probably should have cut one set of these flowers um, prior. Live and learn. I love it when things don't go according to plan because that's awesome. All right, so our cut plate or our base plate, whatever, then our cut plate. And then let's have flowers, flowers, and where are the dyes? This is one that I have not yet gotten into the, my new storage system. Pretty perennial dyes. So they're still in my sleeve. Yeah, Peggy, I'm interested um, to see your, your dye situation. If you can post a picture here, cause you always have, uh, some good plans. All right. And then looks like we've got two leaves. So in this die set, notice that these flowers are the same. I think that's just so you can cut more than one at a time. And we've also got two leaves that look to be the same and two of these. So I like that. Uh, it's just a time saver. That's all. They give you enough that you can cut more than one. All right, so I'm gonna get two leaves cut out of each one of these. 
I'm going to load up my cut plate. Just so I can try to run as much through as I possibly can with one, one fell swoop. All right. Now this quiet is me just trying to figure out the direction of these flowers for the dies. And I'm not going to tape stuff down. I'm just going to go like hope for the best, smash it down. Where's my other cut plate? And I can tell already one of my, um, this yellow flower, the edge is going to get cut off of one of the petals, but that's okay. All right. Oh, I can tell already there's some movement, but we're going to go with it. Post it on mine too. These mostly um, moved and you know what in the interest of time and not screwing these up again I'm just gonna hand cut I need to put these somewhere safe inside my Versamark because I really don't have time to um, redo these So I'm just going to do a little trimmy, trimmy, boop, boop. That one's good. See this one, my stamping, like it went off the edge, but that's fine. All right. That's good. This one, not good, but just going to trim it. roll with it all right and then you know what I feel like I didn't look up um, I usually like to give you a little announcement or something in between projects but I was rushing through so actually let me cut these and hmm which ones are we gonna go with well I have to go with these two actually yeah we'll go with these so while I'm cutting, I will tell you um, next week. Uh, so I've been doing this year a monthly class and it's the second Monday and Tuesday of every month. And I took off for March or April. I can't remember. I think April. No, March I took off. Yeah, April we did the um, we did that file folder folio last month. So this month, which is next week. So May's class is next week, Monday and Tuesday. It's actually usually using the um, Butterfly Bijou, that Butterfly Suite. Um, I only have enough papers because those papers ran out. I only have enough papers for six class packets. So um, when you watch the class next week, you can use any butterfly set that you own. You don't have to have the new butterfly um, you know the one with the die that matches you can just hand cut the things that you need um, that'll be one of them but for all the other cards any butterfly set you have will be fine um, but because of the paper I can't get any more of that I can only have enough for six people um, I actually had ordered two packs of that by accident at the beginning uh, but then somebody, another demonstrator that I knew uh, really needed extra packs for a class that she had already scheduled. And I was like, well, I'll make do. It's fine. So I sent that other pack to her and we'll just have, um, so I can only have six of you. 
So we'll see how that goes. It'll be, you know, first come first serve, um, but it's going to be five cards and then a little box. So remember a couple months ago, I did some book boxes and I like that small size. So it'll be a small square box, but, um, that'll be one of the projects. And then with a little card, we'll make a little card to go inside. So really six cards and a little gift box. And that is going to be next week. Monday and Tuesday. And the way I do that, I do like half the projects Monday and then half of them on Tuesday. And then you have a week or so to let me know, you know, to respond. Most times I have maybe a week and a half response and then I put an order in for certain products. But since this one, it's, there's nothing for me to order. Like I can't get any more of this butterfly paper. So um, I think I'll still give you about a week to let me know if you would like those class packets. And if you already have the stuff yourself at home, even better because you can just follow along the class and make your own. And that's kind of why I like this style of class because, uh, you know, people can follow along if you already have all the supplies. And if you don't, you know, I can hook you up. Plus some people just like getting the pre-cut stuff anyway, like the packets, and then they'll do their own thing. Okay. So now we've got all these flowers and leaves. Let's get back to our tag. So I want to start with, um, let's hope this is dry. Oh yeah. Thanks Peggy. Yeah. Stamp and storage 15% off ends tonight. I knew they had a sale going. Um, good. So I'm just going to glue this. This is our background brick and mortar. Now this tag is going to be, um, you know, it could be a bookmark. It could be, uh, you stick it in your journal. It could be stick it in your notebook. Uh, it could be anything really. You can, hang it off of a gift, but this one's going to be sideways. So I want this, I want this laid down flat and then I'm going to pop up some of the flowers around it. All right. Just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. Hold that there for a minute. Just stick it, Sue. <laughs> All right, now ribbon, a little bit of ribbon. Um, I'm gonna cut about oop, that much. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna staple this on here. So I crisscrossed it, overlaid it a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in here and give it two staples. And I like that enough. All right, now let's just get these on here. Get on with it. Right, Sue? Is that what you're telling me? So let's do some big ones. Actually, let me put dimensionals around. Nope. I need blue dots first. I'm going to put some of these um, petals behind here. Boop. So I think I'm going to hang this like I'm going to put that one there. And then this one is going to need a flower. That's not really going to fit. Oh, maybe it'll. I need to cover up that with another flower. So, all right. So leaves will go here. And if it hangs off a little bit, that's not the end of the world either. All right, let me get this one down. <laughs> you were just going to say where to stick it. You know. All right, oops. Oh, so tomorrow is... 
uh, there's a new subscriber paper pumpkin special um, and there's a promo code which I think I posted already but I'm gonna share that I will post that again today um, it's only five dollars there's that kit that's like a baseball theme and for new subscribers and they use your email for that so if you have a different email than what you used previously then you would be a new subscriber I'm just saying that's like a way to get around a little bit uh, I want this to go here all right and then some smaller ones oops I'm gonna put this guy right there so I want two dimensionals um, but for five dollars like that's a pretty sweet deal and I think that includes shipping. So it's like $5 for the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna put that there and I want that to stick out that leaf right in the middle. And I want a little bit of glue right there. This is just building up, you know, your flower pieces and covering up stuff. All right, and then I will pop this guy up and he is so small, he's not gonna get a leaf. All right, and then what I end up doing is like mimicking the same thing, like so it's same but opposite. Like I'll put that up here so we'll do dimensionals here and here and then a little bit of glue Boop. so yeah um new subscribers paper pumpkin kits they only have so many of the special price ones so once those run out then the kits are like if you sign up it'll be regular price and of course they don't tell us how many um, they just say, oh, limited, you know, whatever. But this looks like a good one. Baseball stuff. Mm, I like it. Okay. So here's our tag. And this too needs some bling. And I want to go with, these were, all right. So these were the last year's in colors. Now I know we don't have these anymore. Um, so I should not use those. I was thinking of these enamel dots. Hmm. No, we're going to use just uh, regular pearls. If I could find them in my stash. Or no, you know what? Champagne. Champagne rhinestones. Because these are kind of generic. And with the brown from the crumb cake. I like the uh, champagne. All right. And actually, we're going to use put some of these in the little flower centers at least for the little ones. And then we'll do the big one. They will get a big one. Ooh, I like that. All right, now what I don't like is this is six and we need an odd number. So let's add three more. So we'll add one and then we'll add another one there and then a medium one how about that okay I like that that is very blingy but I like it all right so that is project number three our tag just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way mmm I love it and again this is six by three pretty perennials and happy thoughts um, but you would use you know whatever flower set you have because you're gonna get like um, you know half a sheet of white pretty much you're gonna get these pieces embossed and cut you're gonna get this die cut and then your flowers you're gonna use whatever you have on hand okay so that is number three and let me check um, May class paper pumpkin yep hostess blah 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 Okay, last thing. Well, next to last thing, because I have that extra one. Um, so this card, and 
here's for our bonus project. Thanks to Sue die cutting stuff. Uh, so with this one, I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, these new dies, these are called basic borders. And I'm so glad that we have these um, because I felt like we needed these for a long time. I've gotten a few of these from other companies, um, but I like it. You get six dies and you make uh, different edges. This is, you know, it looks like it could be a cloud. Um, this is the one I use, just a little oval. I like this point. Yeah, Sean, um, you're right, but it's not the end of the world. I'm just trying to get, it's, I have to get like in the shower by 1230 so that I can get out of here by 1.30. Um, but we'll push it. Okay. So flirty flamingo, five and a half, eight and a half. Let me scooch this under here, bone fold it, but thank you for keeping me on track. All right. White four by five and a quarter. This is for your inside. Now I'm using the art floral, art gallery, my bad, art gallery stamps and the dies. Um, and the stamp is actually just the greeting, all right? And then the dies. So I cut out, this is what you're gonna get, is this cut out of just the flowers, which is this, but we're not gonna stamp this. What we're using this, the die for is, I wanted to show you, even with just a shape of something, all right, that's gonna go here and I'm gonna have the ribbon there. Um, we're just gonna color this. So this is cut out of the thick white, okay? There's, <laughs> there's no hope for me being on track today. Well, yesterday they really, um, they got their money's worth out of me yesterday. I was crazy busy. All right, so flirty flamingo. So I'm just coloring in. going all around the edges. All right, and this, that's the light. And then we're just gonna add some like flicking bits. like flower centers with the dark flirty flamingo. And then I'm gonna go back over it again and I'm using the broad side of this marker. So just so we can get some little blending and you could color yours however you want. Um, my point with this was just that you don't need the stamp. You can just do the die cut and get something cool looking uh, light mint macaron. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go in with the light and color over all these green bits and then dark. Okay. I'm just flicking, adding some Now I think these little circle things are supposed to be something else, but I'm just putting some more color on them. All right, and then like there, and then go back over again with the, the light. That seems very dark, okay. Hmm, I feel like I need another dark, yeah. just so it looks a little, so there's some dimension. All right. So that's what I wanted for that. Just like, a, you know, an idea of flowers. All right, so I wanna add a bit of, whoop. We're gonna add this, this white cut from Tasteful Labels and that's just gonna get glued on. And 
And actually, I just want to tie this um, lace trim in a in a knot. I mean, a bow. So I just want to try to center this a little bit. So this I cut out with the basic borders die, and then I ran it through the Tasteful Textiles folder. And um, that's just because, you know, I wanted some dimension to it, some texture. I'm just going to glue this straight on. And this was still five and a half by probably four. And then I cut it down. I wasn't, I didn't want a full border. I just want this little side piece peeking out over here and then the plain flirty flamingo sticking out there. So, ooh, yeah, I like this. All right, popping this up. And I need one there. Thanks, Gail. All right, and then we are almost finished. Oops. Thanks, Marty. Um, and I just realized I did want to do Wink of Stella on here, um, but that pen is hidden. So, all right, putting this right here. And I just want to tie a bow with this. Uh, so I'm just going to do a hand bow loop, loop it around. I have a little wooden dowel situation that helps me make bows, um, but I don't always use it. Okay. Neat. I'm happy enough with that. All right, and I want to put that right there. And then the greeting. Yeah, that's going to go over here. All right, so we need glue dots for this, attaching our bow. And I'm going to put two or three on here. Why not? All right, so I want my greeting here, and that will go right there. All right, greeting from Art Gallery. So this is a long die cut. There's a shorter, there's this size and a smaller one. Um, but so I want to do congratulations, thinking of you. I'm thinking of you. Yeah. All right this on here and I'm going to stamp this in the mint macaron just because I think the flirty flamingo would be uh, too much flirty too flirty oh yep I think this is the my car place oh no it's my husband hold on oops okay hold please sorry hello hello all right, he hung up on me. He's probably telling me the same thing, Sean, that you got to get ready for work. All right, I'm thinking of you, and I want this to be like right here. And then we need those little mini, or can I get, will this size fit? Okay, regular size will fit. And I'm only choosing these right now because, um, they go quicker. I mean, it's quicker coverage and there we go. All right. I'm thinking of you. Now this needs some regular pearls. I think that goes with that better pearls. And these are really old. This is from when we had mm, three different sizes. So I'm going to use just these small ones. Mm, no, I lied. Let's do a big one too. Big one right there. And then some smaller ones right here. Ooh, yeah, I really like this too. 
I could see this in uh, some different colors for sure. But so this is, you know, die cut something and then just color it with your um, with your blends. Ooh, I really like that, especially with this lace. OK, now for the last bonus thing. So for the first 10 people that order using the hostess code, you're going to get a little extra something using these flowers and it's just you're going to get the color flower whatever set I give you that Sue sent me um, so we have two flowers green pen I got these from Amazon and we're going to use then we're going to need a little ladybug so what we're doing here is I need something backgroundy uh, let's use this so you just want to stamp something on here just to give it some texture like some something on it so I'm just going to use these words it doesn't matter what it is we just want something on here so it's not naked okay Got those let me put these dies back in here so I don't lose them. All right, you're gonna need glue dots for this. And I'm gonna have in a little baggie, your two flowers and one of these um, ladybugs. So Gail and Sue, this is what I wanted you guys to do with those pens. All right, so let's, first we want to curl these just a little bit curl them down. Now, if you can tell where I'm going with this, you are ahead of the game. We're going to make a flower pen or a flower top pen. All right. So let's just curl, 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 boop, glue dots. Ah, uh, these glue dots are very sticky. So we're going to layer our flower punches like so. Now we want to be able to write. So we're sticking our flowers on this end. All right. And I'm just going to take the glue. I mean the pen directly to my glue dots and I'm putting three on here. So they're hanging off the edge a little bit. All right and press that down and uh, how stinking cute is that? And then we want um, our little ladybug and I'm putting two glue dots on her and then I just want her to hang off like on the side. How stinking cute is that? I mean, I guess you could make the flowers come up if you want, but I just liked it um, down and then you write stuff Hi. and these are all black ink pens. I got these off Amazon, um, but the green, then you don't have to worry about taping any um, green tape around the barrel. So cute. Obviously this would have to stick in a jar or something, uh, but that is our bonus. So like I said, first 10, cause I only have um, 10 more sets of flowers and yeah, I don't have those uh, punches. So that's that. That's our bonus thing. And then let's bring in the our other projects. And then I can get in the shower and not be too late. All right. So we've got this card, this card, our tag, and then our square card, our five by five square card. Is this all showing up? I hope so. All right. And then here's our little cute pen. Mm, I can't stand it. This is so cute. Doot, doot, doot. Okay, so that's um, May workshop, May 2021, and I'm gonna have to get this stuff cleaned up tomorrow. Um, I will have this posted on YouTube and updated on my blog in the next day or two. Um, and if you have any questions in the meantime, just email me, Tony Stamps at Yahoo, and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, thanks for joining me. Bye.